God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and once again we're here in the studio and we're about to take a journey to uh, a very old mission in San Gabriel, California. But first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about how I finished up our home on the Mississippi, our last episode. So um, I'll just show you a little bit. I, um, as you can see, there's a, it's a, I brought it to a little more finish. I didn't really change anything. I just uh, put a few places where there was some sky showing through and um, heightened up the uh, the the pillars that are that that it's uh, that it's standing on and um, some little you know uh, branches and everything down here in the foreground didn't really have to do a lot with that one it turned out you know um, it pretty much painted itself I like to say so anyway uh, today. We are going to the San Gabriel Mission in uh, Southern California. San Gabriel is right outside of Los Angeles. And uh, this is the, like I said, this is the San Gabriel Mission. This is just one view. It is a huge place. Um, in fact, uh, some years back it was hit with a, uh, an earthquake and there's a whole new section to it that has been built onto it, so it's much larger now than it originally was. Um, originally, when uh, not too long after the mission was built, it looked like this, and I'm, I'm showing you a picture now of the way the mission looked in the very beginning, and uh, after the, um, the Spaniards came and they founded it, and uh, then the Franciscans took over and uh, the, the Indians that were there, they um, uh, were the workers. So they were the souls that were there working. So anyway, um, I have it um, sort of sketched on in some pale acrylic. Uh, I did this this morning in about five or 10 minutes of which you can tell. Um, I don't know how accurate it is, but it does give me kind of an idea of where I want to go with this. But first of all, I would like to just read you a little bit about uh, of what it says on this sign right here, because I found, I found that very, um, very touching. Saludos, amigos. We witness here the beginning of a new civilization wherein Christianity was introduced to a pagan sphere some 190 years ago. The nearly two centuries this garden of peace has been a haven for the weary travelers, adventurous pioneers, and builders of the magical desert. Here trod the daring redskin, the blithe-spirited Mexicano, the valiant Spanish soldier, and the venturesome Americano. Here you are welcome, forget your cares and troubles as you relive the, fa the early days of the Western world. So I kind of would like you to be in that frame of mind as we talk about this painting and my journey there as, um, as we're painting it. First of all now, it's the, the same palette that I always use, same layout, I don't vary, um, and there's a good reason for that. If I vary, I might get confused. <laughs> so I'm really glad you joined me today. We're going to have a nice time kind of stumbling and bumbling our way through this, through this, uh, across this canvas. Um, I'm a little disappointed in my printer because um, I tried some ink that had been repurposed in my uh, printer and instead of going out and buying the new stuff somebody told me oh try this it's, it'll work just fine you won't have any problems at all and after about 
a half a dozen printings of this painting, or this photograph here that I'm going to be painting from, I could not get it to get any darker than this. I could not get it to, to really be the color that it was. It was much, much darker. Um, and of course, then another thing too, the day that I was here, it was an extremely hot, sunny day and everything already had sort of a bleached out look to it. Um, and I think that's definitely coming through in our photograph. We're going to take a little bit of liberty with that because we don't really want to just copy the photo. We really want to um, give our impression of what we saw, what we saw, what we see, and um, how we feel about it. All of that goes into your painting. What you see, what you feel, how it touches your heart, your soul. It all goes in there. I'm making one heck of a big pile of, of gray here. Is it close? No, it's a little too yellow yet. So I'm still working, I'm adding the paint's gray, and then I add a little bit of the yellow ochre, and I'm trying to bring this down. I don't want it to be in the background there. I want it to be very, very soft. Now, see, that got a little yellow on me. That's how you do that if you want to, you know, try to match a color um, somewhat just... Unless maybe a little bit of red. It just looks dead. I don't like that color. So I want it to have some pizzazz. Now let's see. Okay, that's not bad. And I'm not gonna, uh, I might end up doing a little bit of palette knife work on this, but for right now, what I really want to do is just get these areas blocked in as much as possible. This is a little darker up here where I'm going to go. All right, right in here. And I want, I want to... Um, Just, like I said, just block it in with, with a thinner um, coat of paint. And then I, I think I better go for my sky next. Um, then I want to come back in and give it more of a stucco look. We may not have time to f entirely complete this painting today um, or bring it to a good place. This may be... A two-part show, but only time will tell. If it's going to be a two-part episode or not. I don't mind doing a two-part episode because I can really go much further in depth with you and show you, um, you know, what I'm talking about. But then on the other hand, it's... It... Um, sometimes can get a little lengthy for you. All right, here, just talking away to myself. Ah, do I like that sky? Yeah, I like that sky. Maybe not. Maybe I just remembered something. That sky in California, I'm not going to paint all of the smog. It's very, very smoggy in California. It's very seldom that you get to see a blue sky. But I want this to be a little bit bluer. And dream a little bit. Try to paint it like it used to be. Oh, now we've got a nice knocking sound. That'll drive us all crazy for the rest of the show. <laughs> 
There we go. So the Spaniards were the ones that explorers that came up and founded this this place and they sent a Father Hunapar Sarah to be the first um, person or priest to uh, try to um, make uh, Christians out of the Indians and get them to work. They had a a quite a um, once they had the the Christian or the the um, the Indians had accepted the the faith and the food and everything and how that came about as, as now this is a legend and I'm just repeating the legend to you but how that came about was when father and his, uh, father Sarah and his group arrived there um, the Indians and they were called the Gabriel Gabrieli Linos for the San Gabriel Valley I guess anyway they were going to stop them not let them come out or come you know uh, go any further and Father Sarah put a painting of which was not uncommon for them in those days they carried these religious paintings around with them uh, very carefully as they traveled from place to place anyway he put this painting of the Holy Mother of Sorrows down in front of the, he laid it on the ground in front of the Indians. They were so taken with this painting that they backed up and let them go forward. And so that painting, even to this day, hundreds of years later, still hangs in the older part in the in the the main part of the uh, of the old church in the sanctuary that painting is still there it's really it's really something and how the Indians they thought it, the painting was so beautiful that it convinced him right then and there to let the priest come forward and so I, 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 my own idea of that is they were probably very, very peaceful, of a very peaceful nature because they came and, and they worked and they learned Christianity from Father Sarah. In fact, in, I think it was 1939, um, there was a, um, uh, a statue of uh, Father Sierra, and I'm going to show you a picture of that now. This this is a, a statue of Father Sierra, and um, who founded the mission. And he, uh, if you look carefully, you can see in the background there's an olive tree. That olive tree is the oldest olive tree on uh, on the land of the mission. And uh, what they, uh, the mission, Father Sierra, what, what they specialized in was um, lamp oil. Um, as the other missionaries came and went uh, further north, up and down California, the state of, well, what is now the state of California, and opened up other missions, they actually got their oil from the olive trees, the orchards, the olive trees that Father Sarah and his um, Indians 
uh, Christian Indians, what they, uh, they planted and made. And he produced all of the, they produced all of the oil for the, for the um, missions. 21 of them there were. Okay, now let's see here. I want to get this shape, it's a little bit redder. Excuse my, my quietness. I'm thinking really hard. It's kind of an important part here. I'm trying to um, paint. Doesn't look right. I have to go a little bit darker, a little darker still. And this is more rounded. And in here, we have quite a dark shadow um, right in here. The red in there. Oh, you can hear me whispering to myself, I'm sure. Yes. All right, and then we're going to have some sky down here. It's going to be a little lighter as it comes down. some sky over in here and right in here. All right. Okay. Now let's see here. We just keep coming down with this here. This is um, coming down to about here, I think. And then there is a almost need to outline things here to get them to be able to be seen. This is going like this. It's a little uh, different shape in this little piece right here, and there's a bright highlight on it right here. And that comes down like that. All right. And then we have the wall, and I'm going to make the wall just a little bit more oranger over here. Maybe a little violet would work. See, so, you know, it's um, painting is truly a journey. You, you it, it's trial and error. Uh, it's all just trial and error. You. Um, 
and you think, well, maybe this will work. And if you're lucky, it does. Uh, and then sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, we're just going to, I'm just going to go over this and block this in. I can always wipe out afterwards where my, where, where my um, um, little pot and the other little sign. If I even decide to leave those in there, I may not, I may not put, leave those in there because it may just be too much. But I do want this to be a corner right here, right there. And then, there we go, a little lighter. Right here. Now this is that dark stuff again. And it's coming here and down. Now I see this pot here. I see the pot, I see the, the greenery growing out of it and everything. I'm not gonna worry about that because I can use my, my wipeout tool and, and fix those things later. Okay, now then right under here, right about here we have a, a darker edge. And this should be darker right here too. So now um, in this uh, place they have the the old church, you know the the one that is and it was so phenomenal that most of the old church was not harmed in the in the um, earthquake, but they have the the old church and then they have the new church and um, that they've added on to because there's just a lot of people that uh, in the area that attend mass there. And, okay, let's see. The grounds are huge, there's gardens everywhere, and they have restored areas, certain areas, and you can take tours through here. When I lived in California, I used to attend mass here uh, at this uh, mission. I always thought it was quite a, quite a treat to, to get to go to the mission, for, especially for the special masses. Every year they have a giant fiesta and um, where, I mean, it's just like a two day thing and it takes the whole um, street, it's fabulous. Music and food and, and dancing. <clears throat> okay, now we need a little dark coming right here where this window is and then some light over it. Now I know I have my green in here but I don't want to put it in just yet um, because it's going to bleed. If I put that in now that's going to bleed and I, I don't want to make that mistake of having a, a green mission. So I'm waiting for those things and just, just trying to block in the big, the big areas now. All of the detail that you see, I'm trying to leave that for later. Um, all right. And then right in here. Okay, and then let's see, we have darker down here, a little red in it. And 
And I'm just going to come down and narrow that sign up because I don't want the sign to go off the side of the of the canvas, even though I, that's not what I'm seeing here in the photograph. I'm going to do that because I don't think it would be good composition. That's the other thing, you know, you have to constantly be aware of, uh, of what kind of composition you are building up. Is it, is it going to work, um, read correctly? And I see right in here this little dark is coming right there that makes that little corner right there. Okay. Now then, we have some of the reddish dark right here, this cast shadow that's kind of coming across here. And it's there's there. And then it's coming back here. All right. Maybe a little blue in there might work a little better. Make it have a little different tone. There we go. And the shadow is coming down here. And, and it comes all right through here. That's the bottom. And this is kind of a rose color. That's really pretty down there. It's too bad that it's, that's so far low, so far down on the painting because that's kind of a, a rose color right in there. And these in here, little, little bits of, okay. Um, let's see now. All right, I think what we'll do now is um, get our, some of our dark greens in and uh, for the tree in the background here I am going to have to scoop up my pal a little bit this is wow it grew <laughs> it really did it went everywhere all right that's one thing, you know, if you're a painter, you've got to use paint, that's for sure. Um, this next picture um, I'm going to show you is um, a part of the grounds. And um, I wanted to tell you about that. Um, uh, the, uh, the olive, there's olive trees and the seedlings uh, of the olive grove, which once produced the oil for fueling of the lambs. And then there's an orange tree that was planted uh, there in 1980 uh, because the Franciscans moved on and the Claritians, um, uh, they uh, planted the first Valencia orange grove there at the mission. Um, and then um, the uh, Franciscans had already uh, used cuttings from Spain and uh, planted, you know, the same oranges. So anyway, and they also planted fig and plum and pom pomegranate, and all of those things flourished in the early days. Um, in, um, well, I, had to I already told you about the oldest olive tree. Um, that was planted in the 1860s by a father bot as, as time moved on. And now, how do they get water out there in the mission? How, would it, how in the world, in, out there in the desert of Southern California, did they get water to um, water all these beautiful trees and plants and grapes and everything that they grew? Because you know that they needed a lot of water in order to sustain, you know, groves of grapes. Um, and they got that by building an aqueduct. And they laid clay pipe. Well, here, let me show you another picture. This is a picture of, of the, the well. And um, 
and the early uh, the aqueduct in the early days of the mission, the only water supply came from Wilson Lake. Crudely built clay pipes brought the water from the open ditch to the aqueduct from where the water was piped to the tannery and to the kitchen on the mission grounds. And such engineering skill is displayed in the building of this water system. And it was from these crude beginnings that the desert land was made to bring forth an abundance of fruit. That's really tremendous that they had the ingenuity and the skill to think to do this and, and turn Southern California into a rich farmland at that time. Just gonna mass this in a little bit. And, I, and you'll notice that I'm using a little bit of a brownish looking green because the olive trees are not a bright green, they're a brownish green. And I, I definitely, I don't know if this is an olive tree or not, but I know that in my painting, I want it to be an olive tree. So, there. And then I'm gonna come back on there and make a few. Um, I'm gonna have some real dark in here. Right back in here. All right. And now then, I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm gonna crumple it up. I know it probably sounds terrible, doesn't it? Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm gonna make some, some more paint. Kind of a gray, lighter green. And, okay, I'm going to take the paper, daub it with paint, and come up here. I'm sorry about the, all the noise, kids. Just can't be helped, you know? Maybe if I hum to you while I'm doing this. And I'm going to try to make something that, that represents all those little uh, branches that we're seeing up here that will pop that out and make it look more, um, more true to life. Maybe just a little bit lighter in one, this one area here. There we go. Now we have no place to throw this and I'm not gonna hold it. So I'll just lay it right down there and we'll go on. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Needs a little dark um, to, without the dark, the light doesn't um, look light enough. Is this the brush I was using? Hmm, I'm losing it. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> Gosh, I'm glad you joined me today. <laughs> you probably feel like you're getting a history lesson as well as a, as a um, little painting uh, lesson and, and journey. But, you know, this, this is the kind of stuff that's really important to me. I love it, and I hope you do too. Yeah, that looks a little better with a little dark popped in there, um, here and there. Okay. Don't touch it too much, Kitty. I always have such a tendency to overdo, and that just makes me so mad about myself. All right, I think we can put this green over here now, too. And that will, and it's very dark 
on the bottom here. So I'm just kind of like laying the brush on because I don't, I don't want it to be big, big, um, um, big shapes. I want it to look, you know, as I, in other words, the way that I approach laying in the paint, I want that to be describing the object, the feel of the object. And that's what's really important to me. Now then I can come up with some of this other lighter stuff that I have and I can push up in here and I and I've got I've got my base and you know and it doesn't matter if we go up a little higher if we choose to have a little more of the greenery show. It doesn't matter. There. Okay, now all we have to do is come back and make a highlight on our wall right there. There we go. Now that puts the greenery behind the um, behind the um, the wall like it is rather than in front of it. And then I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of a of a shadow so that you get the feeling that the wall has a little bit of a light uh, striking on the top of it. I'm going to darken this right in here and raise it up some. There we go. All right, and then down in here we have um, some lovely kind of a pinkish, uh, reddish tile that is so old. You just, so you just faintly, whoops, not dark, I'm not light enough. You just faintly see the color of it. And I showed you the picture of the aqueduct and I talked to you about that. I don't want to forget anything today. Um, let's soften that line. Okay. I wish this picture would have turned out as dark, as colorful as I saw it on my camera. It really bothers me. So, I guess, kids, the, 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 um, final solution there is don't buy re, uh, rebuilt cartridges for your printer because they don't work. Okay, so now that's our little shadows and stuff. All right, we're coming along pretty good here. Let's see. Um, we have some real light right in here, and that's coming like this. And that's about the same color as this is, too. It comes like that, and then this is coming down like this. I'm feeling like I'm sort of like I'm building it, <laughs> trying to. And then, whoops, I just heard my camera girl yawn. I hope you're not yawning at home. <laughs> Made her laugh. <laughs> Oh, I do hope you're not yawning at home. Uh, okay, it's coming, it's coming. Let me see here. Some little bit of reddish bricks and... Yeah, we've been... I think we've only got about 20 minutes left, so we're doing pretty good, really. I think. 
a little reddish bricks coming right there. Now we're not going to, you know, make little individual bricks. I'm trying really hard to stay loosey goosey. That's what we want today, loosey goosey. They got to be a little redder though. Don't you wish you had my job? Just travel around and then have fun painting places and making things up. Just standing here gabbing away. It's fun. I have a good, I have a good job. I guess I wouldn't really call it a job. It's my passion. That's what it is passion. What's your passion? I hope it's watching my show. <laughs> that would be nice. And some shade in there. I'm not quite sure what's going on there yet, so we'll just knock that down just a tad. There we go. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Let's get something on this, on this sign here. Oh, wow. That was fun. Look at that. I just grabbed some of that red and put it right there. And look at how that pops. That's exciting to me when that happens. We've got to tone it down, though. It's a little too much. All right. Let's see here. We have, I better, on second thought, I better do the inside first because I know what I'll do. I'll mess it up. There we go. Now, I'm not going to put the writing on it. I read you what the sign said, so you already know what's, <laughs> what it says. Uh, so I'm not going to read, I'm not going to put the writing on it. I will indicate the writing when I take it home in my studio to my studio to, to finish it. And you'll have to be sure. I think, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is not going to be a two-part show. Um, this is going to be completed today and in my studio at home. And I will bring back the finished product to you, show you at our next show. And Lacey says, I have 15 minutes, so I better kick it. Whoops, that's not the right direction. Bring that up like that, down like this. Oh my, as soon as I saw that sign, I got nervous. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And this goes down like this. There we go. That's good enough for now. Okay. So about the only thing that we have left to, to really worry about right now is what is back in, in here. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's this, so many different types of cactuses on this property, and some of them are so old and curled up, they, you know, they, they look like snakes. I mean, they're just really, it's, it's really something, the different types of cactus that are back here. So um, I've never seen anything like, like that before. Uh, let's see here. We have a little splash of something. Well, first of all, I think I better see. You, that's what happens when you're just kind of thinking out loud. Get all confused. Okay, we have some green in here. And I think that is probably from that tree over here. So I don't want to make it too solid. And I'm not going to be able to put this 
this wrought iron fence on until after this sets up a little bit. If I try to do that, I'll me I will really mess it up. Now we have some nice light green on the lawn. Okay, and there's a walkway there. And there's some light green in the background there. And then we have some yellow, green, right back over in here, the plant that's behind here. When I come back in, I'll be reinforcing my edges and everything. Um, This goes all the way off here because it looks like it's a little tiny sidewalk. Whoops. And so this is going to go over to here. And this is going to go like this. All right. And then there's kind of an orange, orangey reddish bush back in here. And like I said, we'll we'll fix all that up later. I want to definitely put that snake cactus in that I'm seeing back there. Um, so I might just take my blue and come down here so I can do that. And then He's such an unusual looking thing. All righty. Then we're going to have the door over that and this little bit of business right there. And um, right here, uh, we're going to have a little bit of the alizarin uh, and crimson, the darker. A lizard and crimson right in here. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> bright, bright, bright. Can't get away from it. There we go. That's what we want. Just a little something in here to kind of pick that up. And we have a little sidewalk. And so that is right there. And then we have another little sidewalk coming right off of here. And it should be very, very light because the light is hitting that very strongly. And then if we want to make this look a little bit more like grass, um, we just take the, the brush, and I'm just poking and playing right now, but uh, we take the brush and we just push it up a little bit, add a little bit of dark down here, and it'll look a little more like grass. There we go. We've got a little sidewalk back there. Now all we need is our little gateway and we've got this beautiful red pot. Let's see what we can do with that. Just at least get something with a little bit of, of color in here. Um, now he's going to have a shadow underneath him. And then he's going to have this beautiful adobe red. Oh, 
a little white. No, more red. There we go. And now, I'm not particularly crazy about that plant, so I'll make one up. Just so that we can have some, something exciting there to kind of show that it's a cactus. That's what we want there is a little cactus. See, I think that looks better. And I'm sure you do too, of course. What are you going to do? You're not going to argue with me there at home? <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. There's our little cactus. And let's see here. Um, this needs to come over just a bit there. And then we need a nice little highlight right about here. There we go. That needs to be a little darker behind, right in here. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All righty, let's see here. Yeah, I think that would look kind of nice. Well, I think when I get home to my home studio, I think I will kind of doctor this up a little bit. I like a little more color in there. Yeah. There we go. Now that doesn't look too bad. Maybe we can put another little pot right here real quick. Okay, she says I have five minutes. All right, five minute pot coming up. Okay. Um, right here. And it needs some red. I do hope that you tune into the next show and watch so that you can see how, how this, um, uh, finished up. And also, I wanted to tell you, um, I have some exciting news. You can now purchase videos of painting journeys. Uh, for the first time since I've been doing the show, we're now offering painting journeys. So if you'll read the credits at the end of the show, that will tell you how to go about getting your own personal autographed copy of painting journeys. Isn't that exciting? Yes. All right. I hope to hear from a lot of you. Oh, I like what I did there. That's fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, what did I tell you everything I wanted to tell you? Um, let me see. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't show you the grapes on the pergola. Here's a picture of the grapes uh, over, hanging over this pergola. And if you look really closely, I'm, I hope you can see the grapes because they're, they were so abundant when I was there. It was just beautiful. And those vines, I mean, how ancient are those vines? And they're still producing like crazy. So it's, it's really something. And I really thank you for, for joining me today. This has been so much fun journeying with you to the, to the San Gabriel Mission. And if you ever get a chance to go to California, do stop by the mission and, and just enjoy. It's just the most wonderful place. And all of those things that I shared with you today, 
They have a lovely museum there where you can find that information. And it's just, it's just an awesome, awesome piece of history, of California history. And of course, being a California native, that's kind of important to me. So uh, let's see here. I see a little light right back there. And I think I'm just going to paint right up until the last minute. I really, really hope that you will, um, you know, if, if, I mean, if the mood strikes you and you want to uh, see this show again, that you will purchase your own copy of it, your own autographed copy of it. It'd be great for gift giving too. So that's kind of exciting. I'm really glad that uh, um, the station decided to make those available to you. So, okay. Oh, you know what? If I keep playing, I'll mess it up. I'm going to leave it alone. No, I'm not. i got to do this right there and there. Okay. All right. That's it for today. I'm so glad you joined me, and I hope you had as much fun as I did. And uh, once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish with Painting Journeys, and I will see you next time. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.